So I want to tell you a little bit about the spinocerebellar ataxias and how they come to ophthalmology and what we need to know about these. We call these SCA, superior cerebellar ataxia, the SCAs. And they got a million numbers. So it's not really that important that you know the, each of the million numbers, but you do need to know what we're looking for when someone is referred to us with spinocerebellar ataxia. It's autosomal dominant, so they often have a positive family history. And it's a progressive disorder, so the patients usually have years and years of symptoms. And the MRI scan might show cerebellar atrophy. The workup for the other things are negative, and so they're going to end up doing the SCA panel on that to look for the genes now. The only way to know what the gene is is to test it. However, ophthalmologists can help neurologists in, t in looking at SCAs by looking for the things that only we in ophthalmology can see. And so that is the retinopathy, and it's like a pigmentary retinopathy, and that can be seen in the SCA 7, but also in 3. And the optic atrophy, which can be seen variably in a number of the SCAs, including 3, uh, but also 2, 3, 4. So the numbers by themselves aren't that important. What's important is how can we help look for stuff that will help the neurologist determine what SCA we're dealing with clinically and then direct the testing towards the one that's the most likely. Otherwise, we're gonna have to do the whole panel. And you're gonna have the ophthalmoplegia and that one also is the three but can be seen in other forms of the SCAs, uh, three, four, six. And the cerebellar signs, of course, are going to be almost all of them because it's spinal cerebellar ataxia. And so the cerebellar eye signs are gonna be the nonspecific signs, the gaze evoked nystagmus and the saccadic dysmetria. So the saccade will be the overshoot or undershoot. So the saccadic abnormalities, saccadic dysmetria. So when we're looking at SCAs, you should be thinking about a SCA in a progressive multi-year history of cerebellar degenerative signs autosomal dominant, positive family history. Ultimately, the only way to know what it is is to test the gene. We're gonna be looking for retinopathy, especially in seven, optic atrophy, ophthalmoplegia, and the cerebellar eye signs, and this is how we can help our neurology colleagues with the SCA.